what's going on YouTube in this video we'll be wrapping up the removal of the old wall build and finally seeing the inside of the Jeep for the first time in over five years uh, we'll actually see the floors and the roof and everything um, it's the first time in a long time and it's kind of strange to see it but uh, hopefully uh, you guys enjoy the video and learn a few things about how I got this thing out So picking up where we were last time, I basically had the front, rear, and the baffle removed already from the shell of the enclosure. And next thing was to cut the sides out so that later I could pull the roof down um, and have the whole thing removed. Um, I wasn't super worried about the roof because it was attached to the vehicle's roof and I knew it wasn't going to fall down or anything until I was ready for it. Getting the roof out was the sketchy part. I was really afraid of it falling on me or potentially busting out that passenger window. You can see it kind of got close when I was able to pull it down. Um, but it was attached with spray foam and a few screws. The foam um, helped me kind of gradually pull it off, but the screws became an issue because I couldn't really access them. Um, eventually I was able to get to where I could cut them off and then get the whole thing out of there, but just dropping it down was nerve wracking. Um, especially because I didn't realize how heavy it was, so that whole roof is definitely overbuilt, and I'm pretty glad it's gone. The last major portion to be removed was the bottom of the enclosure. It was comprised of two layers of three-quarter inch birch, um, basically adhere to a network of 2x4s that I had attached to the vehicle. Um, and then the only way to get any of this stuff out was I had to get the two layers of birch off and then that would gain me access to the wood, um, the 2x4s below, that I had screwed down. And I really just wanted to get to those screws, be able to unscrew them so that I don't have any potential of damaging the Jeep's floor um, instead of just like prying directly on the floor. I had to do it in steps. So you kind of see me doing that here, and dividing and conquering by using the saw and, and just getting bits out at a time. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit on how that subfloor went together, um, that framing basically. You can go back to some of my old videos in about 2016 or so, 2015 when I first built this and see it a little better, but essentially everything was attached here. Now you can see me working with the chisel to kind of clean everything up so that I can gain access to those screws uh, that I'll show you here in a second. see me using a chisel to get the Phillips head of the screw cleaned out so I can actually get a bit to fit in it without stripping it out. Um, and don't worry, this is a really cheap chisel I got from Harbor Freight, so I'm not really worried of banging it up on metal. So with all those screws out, we were pretty much detached from the Jeep other than the silicone that kind of sticking the wood down but luckily that pries out pretty easily so what I did was I made a relief cut with my saw so they could get the pry bar in and pry each side against the other to kind of get off the vehicle without really prying against the floor and putting dents in it and this method worked pretty good you can see some of the rust I found here luckily it was mostly surface rust and nothing had really eaten into the metal so overall I think this thing it was a good time to take it apart and take care of these issues so pretty happy there with the Jeep empty you can see it sits pretty tall now so this is something I'll be addressing later on so now with it empty I think the next thing I'm going to do is be getting the sound editor out and pretty much giving myself a clean slate alright guys so she is empty and it is really weird it is really weird I took it for a drive yesterday we went to the dump and we hauled off the wall and the trailer did really good. I was able to fit everything I needed and then some in it. And uh, we had, I think we dumped like 1,200 pounds 
of things. So trailer carried very well. Towed good. Everything's great. I do have things to address on the Jeep suspension. Like now that it's empty and sitting different, I'm looking at getting a lift kit for it so I can level it out. I want to get the front up a little bit more and uh, help some of the driving handling and, and such. And uh, yesterday while driving, I noticed there was something that didn't feel right in the front end when I was turning. Like, I feel like a control arm bushing may be bad or something, but uh, we'll be going through it. But she got a bath yesterday and uh, she's looking a lot better and happier than she has in a long time. So very excited, loving the setup here. So I'll show you guys the inside. She is needing love on the inside for sure. But uh, like I said, we're gonna pull a deadener out. We're gonna clean her up. We're gonna get her back to how she used to be. <clears throat> and of course the beautiful doors, gotta love them. Those will stay. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I always appreciate your support and your likes and your comments and I love hearing from you guys. And uh, I try my hardest to try to upload and make some nice videos for you to show off the Jeep. Um, but now I'm gonna need your guys' support more than ever because I think I'm doing something that won't be in popular interest, but uh, it is my build and I'm gonna do what I want with my Jeep. So uh, I have something to admit to you guys, but I'm not gonna say anything until the next video. So. We'll see what happens, but uh, it's going to be what it's going to be. This thing's going to be badass either way. So stay tuned. We got a lot coming. Thanks, guys. Oh, and by the way, Jeep and Bass t-shirts available. JeepandBass.com. They're pretty awesome. Until next time, guys.